This is Takahiro with Malicious File for Exploiting Forensic Software. So let's give a round of applause for Takahiro. Uh, hi, I'm Takahiro Hariyama from Internet Initiative Japan. That is a Japanese internet service provider company. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in anti forensics. Uh, so last year, I spoke anti memory forensic method at Black Hat EU. Today, I talk about anti disk forensic method to exploit, to exploit the library component included in commercial forensic software. First of all, I introduce myself. My mission at the company is instant response, such as digital forensics, malware analysis. I made presentations or uh, taught in hands-on classes at several conferences. And I distribute some tools on my blog. I also have NK Certified Examiner since 2009. Uh, please follow me on Twitter if interested. This is today's summary. First, I want to make the background clear to exploit bugs of file viewer component in forensic software called outside in. Next, I explain how to fuzz it. Then I demonstrate anti-forensics misusing two vulnerabilities detected by the fuzzing. I also refer to countermeasures. Finally, I summarize my presentation. I explain background and motivation. A function viewing file content is required in forensic analysis, and most commercial tools adopt the same library. For instance, in case FTK, x forensics, and things like that. The library is Oracle Outside in Technology, originally developed by Strand. Since outside in can analyze, extract, convert over 500 different file types data. Uh, it's used by not only forensic software, but also enterprise run like Microsoft Exchange, Six Security Agent, uh, Semantic Enterprise Board, and so on. This means the impact is very large when exploiting the vulnerability of outside in. Practically, some uh, several bugs of outside in were reported last year. If still exploitable, lots of forensic investigators are exposed to risks of anti forensics such as process hang up, malaria infection. Forensic software often needs privilege that indicates malicious code execution on forensic software process can do everything on the system. Uh, for instance, attacker may own forensic workstations for government organizations. Uh, it can be an advanced targeted attack. That's why I initiated the uh, I initiated an investigation about the exploitability. I performed fuzzing to discover bugs in outside in library, I briefly showed the implementation. This is an outline drawing of the further implementation using NCase. It's composed of three factors. First, I use mini files, that is a file format further provided by Microsoft. It mutates input files and run NCase. Next, custom script uh, called NCase N script invokes outside in functions to display files. By the way, NCase usually detects mini files and terminate it immediately because mini files debugs NCase to monitor exceptions and register values at that time. So I wrote a kernel driver to prevent the detection. We have two methods to call outside new function using the NKSN script. Get the doc view and write transcript in document class. 
I wrote an A script to call both of the methods. And for your information, usually A script cannot receive command line arguments from in case. So I used third party tool to pass arguments to the script. If the minifers catches any exception or in case, uh, it outputs the log like this and save the mutated files like, like this. In my experience, the father discovered one bug for about 10,000 files. Next, I analyzed the two files generated by the father in more detail to identify the kinds of vulnerability and exploit them. As a result of the analysis, I introduced two exam examples of anti-forensics. They are uh, process hang up using infinite loop dos vulnerability and arbitrary code execution using heap overflow vulnerability. I tested them on two forensic tools, NCASE and x rays forensics. The latest version of outside in is 841, but both tools still use or recommend the old version. And practically, there are two versions in any case, version six and version seven. I think most any case users prefer six to seven, correct? Uh, could you raise your hand if you do a forensic investigation using any case? Oh, and mainly use version six? Okay, most people. Uh, anyway, if you install NK6, upside in H35 will be installed by default. Uh, in case of version 7, 840 is installed. Uh, on the other hand, we can select H37 or 841 in the installation of x rays forensics. Uh, but x rays recommends H37 for web history examination because uh, HTML, HTML preview function of index that does not work in the latest version. That's why I selected H37 for testing. The first example is process hang up. The vulnerability included in the function passing hang word processor format document <laughs> using the black a malicious file can cause infinite loop in a specific DLL routine. The vulnerability affected all versions, but Oracle released the fix two weeks ago. So I hope all software vendors embedding outside in will update as soon as possible. I show the demo on NK7. The OS is Windows 7. Run NK7, open case, and access to the malicious file. Call out uh, the function by clicking the talk view, then in case process has been freezing. The CPU usage is about 100% and the user cannot operate anything. I know it's not funny, uh, but effective for delaying forensic analysis, uh, especially when processing massive files uh, automatically, for example, keyword searching, 
uh, in such a case, the investigator cannot have a clue about the cause of hang up. The second example is arbitrary code execution. The heap overflow bug is included in the function passing each taro format document that is a Japanese word processor. The heap overflow, uh, as a result, a crafted file can overwrite heap chunks in memory. The vulnerability affected H37 and earlier. But Oracle also recently released the fix. Therefore, I expect software vendors using the vulnerable version of outside in will update up, up will update at once. I fill in the gaps on some tricks for exploiting heap overflow. As you know, Vista or later Windows OS adopt various mitigation techniques to prevent um, exploitation of heap corruption vulnerabilities. For example, look aside list that is not protected by safe unlinking uh, has been replaced by low fragmentation heap. Besides heap, heap entry metadata randomization and randomized heap based address are introduced. As a result, misusing heap metadata is very difficult. One promising method for exploitation of heap overflow is overwriting function pointers in heap chunks. Uh, but the offset values to function pointers are not constant because it depends on heap allocation status. Heap spray allows us to put our shell codes at a predictable address. For heap spray, we need to fill chunks of memory in the heap before gaining control of our program counter. Web browsers and Adobe Reader provide an easy mechanism to do this. They have scripting support, so you can use JavaScript, VB script, and Action script. What about forensic software? Unfortunately, it does not support them. Consequently, I used the heap spread technique with bitmap images. Checking images such as JPEG, GIF, bitmap on forensic software is a very common operation. And most forensic software supports displaying several images at the same time. In order to trigger a bitmap heap spray, for example, in N case, use bookmark page as image in doc view, then make the bookmark images set included. Set included means displaying all items recursively. In x ray forensics, simply double-click image files. This is a debugger window attaching to NK6. After heap spray, uh, large heap chunks are allocated to put the shell code at a specific address. And once function pointers are overwritten like this, uh, an indirect call execute the shell code. Since NK6 does not activate depth, so we can execute from this address. Uh, if depth is enabled, we need to put the rope gadgets at this address. It's more complicated, but of course possible. It's demo time. I start with NK6, then x ray forensics. The OS is Windows 7. Run NK6 and open the case. First, check normal file using outside in. 
I can build uh, file content. Next, if I would like to see all bookmarked uh, items, set to included and select the gallery. The ordinary operation causes heap spray. <laughs> Then clicking the malicious file triggers heap overflow and overwriting function pointers. As a result, shell code is executed. In this demo, it runs calc. It's funny. <laughs> okay, next, x ray forensics. Run x rays, open directory, and view bitmap images. Heap chunks are spread. And click the malicious file, then calc is executed. That's it. <laughs> yes? Yes, the same file. So in this way, one corrupted malicious file uh, makes it possible to execute arbitrary code, uh, arbitrary code on multiple forensic software uh, by exploiting the bug of the common library. <laughs> However, honestly speaking, the success of code execution is unstable because function pointers called call in a short time after overflow must be included in overwritten area. To improve the probability, we need to manipulate heap chunk layout before causing overflow. From now, I explain some countermeasures. To prevent overflow, of course, buffer boundary checking is essential, and the Vista operator provides heap enable terminate on corruption option through heap set information API. If the option is enabled, the success, uh, process terminates immediately with status heap corruption error. This debug window is NK7. NK7 enables the option by calling heap set information and passing value one as heap in information class that means uh, heap enable terminate on corruption. So I could not execute arbitrary code by heap overflow on NK7. And in order to prevent bitmap heap spray, disable the operation causing it. For instance, in NK6, Enable pictures in doc view option and uncheck for pictures to option in X rays. We can display multiple pictures on the view using another method, so it's no problem even if the options are disabled. As common countermeasures, I recommend to use the latest version of outside rain. Because 840 or later probably seems to fix 
all bugs except the infinite loop dose bug discovered by my father. If you want to use NK6, you can choose an installation without file viewer. Uh, instead, configure for using native applications. For example, set Microsoft Word for viewing doc and docx files. Last but not least, configuration of exploit mitigation like emit and app locker is also effective. Yes. Could you say again? Yeah, you need to have that person on the case just in, in the investigator desktop in the latest version. Or there is any DL, uh, DL or component on the client side. So I tried it, but it seems not to work. Okay. I wrap up my presentation. I told you the risk when examining unknown files acquired in forensic investigation. The file viewer is more fragile than you think, uh, especially if old. Practically, the two bugs may be just a little bit of the problem because several bugs still remain in the old version. For example, in the function passing Microsoft Word doc file, PowerPoint, and things like that. So investigators should pay attention to the security settings of their workstations. And the foreign software vendors tend to use an old version of the component. Therefore, I think they should update their products as soon as the latest version of outside is released. Much the same is true on f enterprise software provided by Microsoft, IBM, McAfee, Symantec, and so on. That's it for today. Thanks for coming.